Welcome back to the lab, folks. So today what we're going to do is going to investigate the three R's. Well, one of the R's of the three R's. Back when I was a little bit younger and the environment started to become more important, uh, they came up with the phrase uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Unfortunately, at this point in time, people don't seem to be willing to reduce. There are certain places like here in Ontario where reuse is almost impossible. We have some draconian laws here that if electronic components get into the hands of an official recycler, um, then that official recycler is not allowed to do anything with those electronics except for destroy them and extract the materials out of them. So the reuse is, is kind of gone. And uh, of course, recycling, we all know that for the most part, it's a lie. But uh, at least I'm going to try to address the reuse component. And what I try to do is I try to get lithium batteries out of things. So let's go so through some of these here. Like this, this is a rather chunky little lithium battery. I got this out of a, a water pump. It goes onto a standard five gallon bottle. The pump fits down the top and is rechargeable and you pump water out. And I also rescued the pump out of it, which I'm going to be using for something else. So that's a nice little battery. I tested it out, it's perfect. These little ones here came out of vapes, very similar to these. This came out of a, a vape too, and I thought it was very undersized. This also came out of a vape. Now these two are examples of, you're not gonna be able to rescue this. Like anything that has had, had, had a swollen edge on it, like this one probably got so hot that the sleeving around it uh, just got loose on it. This one here is a polymer battery, lithium polymer, and it, it's swollen up, like it's puffy, it's swollen up. It's also, I think it measures down around about 0.2 volts. This one measures about around about 0.4 volts. Yeah, you gotta be careful about those ones. Don't try to charge a battery that looks like that. You'll only get grief. These two came out of fancier vape pens. They were just, uh, you could just unscrew the bottom of them and take the batteries out, so they're replaceable. Both of these vape pens, though, were dropped or some other thing happened to them and they got destroyed. And I thought that uh, it was very interesting looking at this one. Fire hazard, not for vape, um, yet uh, it, was, it was put in a vape. These ones over here are pretty tiny, but they still can be very useful for little projects. And I'd rather see them sitting in my box of little batteries than going into a dump. This one is 310 milliamp hours. And this one here, 380 milliamp hours. This one here has a protection module on it. So the battery's down in here, between here and this point here. And now there's a little foam plug. You can see, is it on here? Yeah, there's one on here, one, a thicker one down here. There's little foam plugs at the ends. So you have to be able to, you have to cut right at those foam plugs. Also the wire runs along the bottom here. So what I do is I cut starting here and I go about one third of the way and then start here and go about one third of the way and I just, just cut in to the metal and then I break it open. And then that allows me to get to the battery. Now I, with these ones here, you have to do both ends because you have to disconnect the wires from here if you can't get that module out. I'd like to get that module out. Oh yeah, another thing is uh, take the modules off. Like if a battery is like this, you're gonna be throwing it out and it has a protection module like this one came off here, take that out. I can use that in conjunction with this battery here. They're about the same milliamp hours and it would just work perfectly for this battery. Now, I use certain things to make sure that this is safe. I've never had a problem, but what I do is I use a, a Dremel-like tool like this with a, a fiber abrasive wheel on it. So it's non-conductive. So if it does come in contact with the wires and won't short it out to the case or anything like that. And what I also have with me is I have this pan here with a lid. So if anything goes wrong, I have this right beside me, I toss it in there, put the lid on it. I've never had to do that, fortunately. And I also do all this in the garage. So I'm right in the middle of a concrete floor if anything goes wrong. Take precautions if you're gonna do this. What I should say is don't do this at home. But anyway, I am going to do this at home and uh, I'll come right back after I make my cuts on these four and I'll show you what I mean.
Now, since we're on the topic of uh, lithium batteries, I got a package in from AliExpress, which is lithium batteries. Yeah, I'll leave a link to these down below. I they were a pretty good deal. Uh, I haven't tested them yet. I just saw they just literally came in this morning. And these are for this power bank over here. So I'm going to populate it and put it to use. Okay, let's check all these before we put them in there to make sure they're not too far apart. So 3.94. So they're all well within a tenth of a volt of each other. So there shouldn't be any huge high currents passing through here. They'll bounce very quickly. So let's just start popping them in here. Now we have a little power bank. So it's a 89% charge. Now let's uh, let's plug the solenoid into it though to see if it uh, has any kind of PD capability. And we'll turn this. It does not. It's not going to bother getting this iron going. All right. So it's just going to be for what I wanted, just to power up some devices at five volts. All right, folks. I think that's all I have for you today. Just a quick video about lithium batteries and rescuing them and uh, putting them into power banks. All right. Thank you very much for coming out. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.